Hi, I'm Mermaid Tristan, and I'm here today to tell you about the Active Pass Mermaid. Active Pass, 1967. If you were taking a ferry across there from Vancouver to Schwartz Bay, chances are you might have seen something a little weird, maybe even a little fishy. There was a time in 1967 when one of the BC ferries was making the trek from Vancouver to Schwartz Bay and people on board got to see something highly unusual. It wasn't an orca, it wasn't a porpoise, it wasn't even a kraken. They saw a mermaid. There was a mermaid who was perched on the rocks who was said to be eating large chunks of a coho salmon. She was said to have long blonde hair and some really cute dimples. Now imagine it's 1967. We don't have the instant technology that we have today back then. You were lucky to have people who had conventional cameras. Luckily, there were people on board that particular ferry ride who happened to have cameras handy. They got photos of this mermaid, so it wasn't just a collective hallucination. So fast forward to the people who have gotten this ferry ride and seen this mermaid, and they started talking to the Times colonist out of Victoria, BC. They said, we've seen this mermaid. And then other people said, we have photos of this mermaid. The Times colonists talked to the people who had been on the ferry and who had taken the photos. They collaborated with the Undersea Gardens, which was located in Victoria's inner harbor. The Undersea Gardens wanted to offer a contract to this mermaid. They said if there was live proof of this mermaid, they would offer her room and board, a salary, and as many combs as she could manage to keep her hair nice. It sounds pretty sweet for me in terms of being a mermaid. However, things like this don't always pan out. It turns out that the Active Pass Mermaid was an amazing and elaborate hoax. The woman who portrayed the mermaid was actually a bar server by night and an office worker by day and had been approached to be part of a promotion for a fishing derby. The gentleman in question who was putting together this promotion was like, hey, what's gonna sell tickets to this fishing derby? What about a mermaid? So he approached this young woman and was like, hey, wanna be a mermaid? This is 1967, so this isn't like today where we can go on Wish and just order a tail online. It was a little bit more unusual to be identified as a mermaid in 1967 in BC. But this gal, she was on board for the plan. They took her measurements and the man's wife uh, who was putting this thing together, he made her costume, they got the wig and they took her out from Saturna Island out to Active Pass where they put her up on some rocks, got her situated with her wig, put her mermaid tail on and gave her a giant coho salmon with a couple bites out of it as a prop. So the idea was she was going to be perched up on these rocks as the fairies go by and she would wave prettily to all the passengers as they went by. That isn't actually what happened. What actually happened was this woman was taken out by a dinghy, placed on the rocks, placed with the salmon, and probably thought she was going to die. The thing about Active Pass is there's a lot of active tides around there. So where she was, the tide was coming in and the eddies from the wake of the ferry were in danger of dragging her right back out into the Strait of Juan de Fuga or the Strait of Georgia. I'm not sure what side of the, the line, the international line it was. But she was in danger of being dragged out to sea, which, you know, in a heavy mermaid tail and a wig holding a salmon was already something that was kind of upsetting as an idea. So she was worried about being dragged out to sea. That is a legitimate concern. You don't have to suffer from thalamatosis to have a fear of being dragged out to sea when you're wearing a mountain raid outfit on some rocks. So what else did she have to worry about? Well, Aside from having to worry about being drowned by the currents and the wake of the water, she also had to worry about the resident orcas and the sea lions and the seals. The resident orcas were the ones that would follow salmon runs, and here she is sitting on some rocks with basically a giant piece of chum. 
On top of it, there's a lot of sea lion and seal populations that go up and down those islands. So there was a lot of other animals, large pinnipeds, who would probably have liked to have eaten that salmon. So she was in what I'm going to say a bit of a cultural disadvantage, even though she was a mermaid. So this woman who was a mermaid, what happened to her? Did she just dry up? Did she get eaten by an orca? What happened to her? Well, it turns out the Times colonist had a reporter that went and found out. So he followed this woman to Middle America and tracked her down. And when he finally knocked on her door, all she had to say was, Honey, you got too much time on your hands. So it turned out that after she was a professional mermaid, she decided to come as inland as possible. Never really talked about her time as a mermaid. Never talked about the undersea gardens or the potential lucrative mermaid contract. Just kind of disappeared. But that leaves an interesting point. That's the active past mermaid that we know about. Here in Vancouver today, there is a thriving mermaid community of other mermaids, mermaid performers, and stunt divers who would quite happily take up that contract at the undersea gardens were it not defunct in the bay. But that leaves me wondering, maybe there's a lot of potential tourist work for mermaids in the future in BC, not just in active past.